So, early this week, I posted a message on the YouTube community tab asking for your feedback on TLDR and more specifically, TLDR UK. Broadly, our business is doing well at the moment. TLDR Global and EU specifically have been doing really well in recent weeks. But viewership on this channel, TLDR UK, has been struggling. So I wanted to ask you guys for your feedback. And with nearly a thousand comments on the post, it's safe to say you did. So in this video, I'm going to be openly responding to your feedback and criticism, as well as explaining our thoughts going forward. These are all the topics we'll be discussing, so if you want to use the chapter things in the description, you can jump straight to the topics you're interested in. One of the first complaints we received quite a lot of was that our videos are too long, with many people saying that our videos had got longer over time in order to hit monetization objectives. Now, the reasoning behind this isn't anything sinister, and it's not even really to do with monetization. It's more because we want everyone to be able to engage with our content. That's why we make sure that the videos are long enough to take everyone from the ground level to fully understanding a topic. Some of you were saying, though, that our videos are padded out too much and include too much superfluous information, and that's something we'll try and work on in the future. Also, if your issue is that the videos are too long, then we do have a new series, which is TLDR Now. These are shorter videos on more breaking stories, which allow you to get straight to the point and understand what people around you are talking about. However, not everyone will love TLDR now, as we saw from these comments. Specifically, the complaints surrounding TLDR now relate to the fact that we use a split screen format on the videos. That means that part of the screen is taken up by animation and part of the screen is taken up by the host of the video, normally me at this point. To understand why we're making these videos and why we made that animation decision, it's probably worth explaining the context behind TLDR now. The problem we found was that our main videos just take too long to make. From the start of writing all the way through to the end of production, each video normally takes about 48 hours or 15 to 20 working hours. Now that's fine for certain topics and we can often prepare in advance to make sure that we're ready to hit deadlines. But if there's breaking news topics, stuff that's going on in the world that people don't understand that we want to explain, that timeline is just too long sometimes. As such, we wanted to develop a new format which allowed us to make content quicker and discuss things we ordinarily wouldn't be able to, at least not without being massively late to the story. Now solves that problem because we're able to make a full video in a morning. We're able to do that with the Now series, in part because the videos are slightly shorter, but also because of the animation style. Having me over on one side actually makes the whole thing quicker. That's because the detail of the animation needs to be a lot higher to hold your attention if it's full screen. Whereas if it's only taking up part of the screen, the animations can be more simple and they can also move slower without putting people off the videos. This means that we can put together the full animation in between 60 and 90 minutes rather than the 8 hours to 10 hours that a normal fully animated video takes. We could of course fully animate the now videos too, but if we did, it would take a lot longer and we'd lose the whole advantage we were striving for with the new format. Also, looking at other political channels that are popular, specifically ones that talk about UK politics, it's definitely not uncommon for people to have their own face on the screen and very basic animation. One change we have made already though, based on your feedback, is decreasing the amount of space that I take up on the screen, from half the screen to only a third, which means we have much more space for graphics and we can also do things which are slightly more fun and slightly more detailed on two thirds of the screen. These aren't replacing regular explained videos. Note, we've still got exactly the same number of fully animated explained videos on every channel. The only difference is that these now videos are being added on as supplemental extras. The way you can tell the difference is by looking at the thumbnail and the runtime. Obviously, as I said, the now videos tend to be shorter. Also, the thumbnail itself tells you what kind of video it's going to be up at the top. On top of that, you can see from the design of the thumbnail that there is some differences. Now videos have a harsh line in the middle, whereas explained videos have the gradient that you're likely more used to. Another issue a lot of people talked about was our promos and our intros. Let's discuss why the promos are even there. And um, Maybe that feels obvious. We're trying to sell stuff and we're trying to get more subscribers. Um, both of those things are true. But as I said, our fully animated videos normally take between 15 and 20 hours to produce. For example, our recent video on Keir Starmer and the Labour Party got 61,000 views and made us £208. 
Now that's obviously before tax and before any of our overhead costs. So once you've taken those away, you don't have a whole lot of money left to pay all of those people. In fact, this video didn't even break even. Now, this was a lower viewed video, admittedly, but it does show why the promos are more necessary, simply because CPM just isn't high enough on YouTube. As such, it's crucial to the business that we have patrons and that we're selling merch items. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this either. I'd rather there was a different model that allowed us not to work this way. But ultimately, it's just how the digital world works, and we're in a more fortunate situation than a lot of other digital creators. So while the promos might be annoying, there's not a whole lot we can do about them. In fact, I own 100% of TLDR, and yet I'm the lowest paid employee on an hourly basis. If this was a get rich quick scheme, it wouldn't be working. We're doing this because we genuinely believe in it, and because we think the videos we make are useful and important. Anyway, I'm not trying to make this your problem, this is obviously a business issue. And as such, we are going to make some changes. Firstly, we're going to try experimenting with where the promo sits. At the moment, it sits after the intro, and as I said, normally takes about 30 seconds. Instead, we're going to move it right to the front of the video and reduce the time to about 10 to 15 seconds, with a follow-up at the end of the video. This is something you might be familiar with other YouTube channels doing, such as Half as Interesting. This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex STEM subjects simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 people to sign up at brilliant.org slash HA. <laughs> You can spend that free time checking out Brilliant.org, the best place to learn about new topics in STEM. Whether you want to learn computer science, review math and logic... One of the channels that a lot of you are subscribed to, at least according to the data that YouTube gives us. Changing this model might be effective and it might help us to maintain the balance between ensuring the videos are profitable and keeping you guys happy. The next set of complaints and the next reason why people aren't watching as many videos is to do with impartiality and bias, with people suggesting that our videos are becoming less impartial as time goes on. Now, most of the time, these complaints didn't come with actual examples, which is fair enough. It's not your job to hunt through our videos and find examples. If you think we become less impartial, that's entirely fair. The problem is, though, that it makes it a little hard for us to work out which things you're referring to. The people who did give examples, I looked into and were trying to rectify. But for the rest of you, if you think we genuinely are being biased and think that there are impartiality issues, then we'd love you to report it through the portal on our website. We've offered this for a while now, but this system allows you to fact check our content and report impartiality issues, as well as some other things too. So if you do think one of our videos isn't impartial enough, then be sure to let us know and we can get back to you on it. That's more useful to help us fix the issue than just general feedback, although obviously that sentiment is useful too. The next set of complaints are the people who say we're getting too clickbaity. As time's gone on, we've included more provocative questions in our titles and thumbnails to grab attention. I'd argue that when you actually get to the content of the video, it stays the same quality. The video is about the politics and policy behind that argument. Ultimately though, we are going to try and dial this back and ensure that we get the balance right between attracting new viewers and turning off existing fans who just don't like that style of promotion. The next reason people said they weren't watching TLDR UK as much was because we had too many channels or they were interested in one of the other channels instead. And this does make sense. Firstly though, it's worth explaining why we have multiple channels. Originally, TLDR started as just covering UK news, mainly because it was only me working out of my student bedroom and I was a full-time student or had a full-time job. However, as we grew and our capacity expanded, we were able to cover other issues. And as such, we set up spin-off channels to cover US, EU and global news. The reasoning behind this was that if we mixed it all together, people would on average be interested in fewer videos. If we had one main channel which covered all four of these things, only about a quarter of the videos would be on UK stuff, quarter on US, quarter on EU, quarter on global. So say you're a US viewer who's specifically interested in our US content, then that would mean most of the stuff we were posting on the channel wouldn't be of interest to you. By splitting it off, you're more likely to subscribe because when you see one of our videos, click through the channel, you can see that all of the videos are on a topic you're interested in rather than only a quarter of them. Also, algorithmically, it makes sense. If you only click on some of our videos when they're shared with you, then we're likely to be deprioritized in the algorithm. 
However, if people say that they're not as interested in the UK channel anymore, that does make sense, because ultimately the other channels will kind of cannibalise each other. If on the UK channel we're covering less international news because Brexit is less of an issue, then it makes sense that people from those other countries will be less interested. Why would people from other countries necessarily care about British domestic politics? Another reason people gave for not watching the channel as much at the moment came down to summer, lockdown and mental health. And all of these make perfect sense. Certainly in the UK, summer is just beginning, and the weather's been pretty great recently. Well, it's raining right now, but it's been good up until today. Also, after a tough year, lots of people are taking a mental health break and stepping back from politics. Doing what I do, I can also see how politics can affect your mental health, and I completely understand why people would want to step back and stop engaging as much with us and other political outlets. That makes perfect sense, and it's entirely fair enough. Another reason people gave was down to the algorithm, suggesting that our videos are being promoted less often by YouTube. If this is the case and you want more of our videos, then of course you can hit the notification bell so that you're manually notified by YouTube every time one of our videos is released. This could be the real problem. Maybe the algorithm has deprioritized us, but most of the time I'd rather not blame things like that and focus on what we can do and what we can change instead. Another reason people gave is that the news cycle just isn't as interesting at the moment. The topics we're covering aren't as interesting because there's not as much to talk about. Ultimately, this will go in cycles, and different countries have different levels of interest at different times, which is kind of why we made all the different channels. Ultimately though, we're looking forward to when the news cycle gets a bit more interesting in the UK, because you're right, topic selection has been a little difficult lately. The main thing I learned though from looking through all 1000 comments is that you just can't please everyone. One of our recent videos, the one discussing a left-wing electoral pact, was used as an example by a lot of people. Some people gave it as an example of exactly what we should be doing in the future, more hypothetical discussion of political topics, while other people said they hated the video. Ultimately then, we can't please everyone. People subscribe to the channel for different reasons and are interested in different things, and maybe we should have realised this sooner, but trying to please everyone just isn't going to work. But with your feedback and with everything we've gone through today, hopefully we can make small changes which make it appeal to more people and make it appeal to you more often. If you do have any further feedback, then be sure to let us know in the comments below. And as I said, you can feedback on individual videos via our website. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.